down, man. Suitcase this, my cell phone and my charger don't walk with a limp. Get it knocked off or missing, you gon' get it. Next time I see you, she gon' leave airlifted. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of K Fraud TV. Y'all already know this K Fraud live and direct, and what you're tuned into right now is a prison channel, aka the prison genre. Y'all go ahead and hit that like, subscribe button, and make sure you hit the notification bell so you can see it first. What I'm gonna be speaking on today is the differences between a razor blade and a knife. And the reason I'm doing that is because I did a video, you know, a couple videos ago about how to make a knife out of toilet paper. And you know, people went crazy in the comment section and was like, oh, did you tell the people that a razor blade is a knife? Why wouldn't you just use the razor blade? You know, different, different little shot that they were firing at me in the comment section. So I figured, you know, I'm going to make a video explaining the differences between a razor and a knife. All right. So y'all sit back, bear with me, and let's go ahead and get into it. All right. So now, like I said, the differences between a razor blade and a knife. Yeah. In my uh, video I made about how to make a knife out of toilet paper, I used a razor to cut it after I glued it all together and everything like that. And I guess people didn't understand how prison works. You know, when you want to get something done in prison, you're going to probably have to go on a mission just to get what you first started with done. For instance, if you have a pack of peanut butter in your damn locker, but you ain't got no bread and no jelly, you're going to have to find bread and jelly. Right or wrong? You might have to smuggle some damn bread back from the chow hall and might have to purchase some jelly from someone that works inside the chow hall just to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That's the same way it is with anything in prison. Anything you do in prison is not going to be easy. It isn't going to be simple. And since they don't hand out razor blades no more, you feel me? You got to get it yourself, you know? But it is a common thing to come across. You understand? So it isn't like, oh man, what if I didn't have a razor blade, I couldn't make that knife. That isn't true because razor blades are everywhere and you only need something that is sharp enough to cut the toilet paper knife. You understand? Now, you have homeboys. You'll have people in there that have bangers. You understand? Or someone that has something sharp. And trust me, people let people use things or they'll cut it for you. You know, you understand? So it isn't like it's impossible if you ain't got a razor blade. Because there is literally ways to get razor blades. If you don't have one that is, you know, a typical razor that you would get out of a shaver or something like that. Uh, duh. The fences alone have a razor blade on them. You see what I'm saying? And you find pieces of this laying everywhere. It's prison, okay? So, basically, what you're going to learn in this video is the differences between a razor and a knife. Every time I've seen someone use a razor, okay, some got away with it, some didn't. You understand? Me, personally, I've been in situations where I had to get a razor and do what I had to do, too. To be real with you, people only want to use razors if that's all they can get. If that's all... They have like a last resort. And the reason for that is because a lot of people flop when they try to use a razor. When they try to cut someone, you know, even trying to protect yourself. You can have it like this or off the fence, like I said. Or you can even have it melted to a toothbrush like you see in most common movies. You understand? But regardless, all you could do is slice with this. That's all you could do is slice. So if you run up on someone... And you want to do what you got to do to them. And when you run up on them and you slice that person, right? Two things are going to happen. One, that person's going to decide to get missing after you hit them once or twice. Because you don't get a full force when you slice them. You see what I'm saying? You get a way deeper force and harder hit when you're penetrating. You feel me? So, like I said, the two things, they're going to either get missing off rip or... They're going to turn around after you slice them once or twice and they're going to get on your ass. Because believe it or not, a lot of people ain't scared of a razor blade. Razor blades are meant for like low key, you know, like trying to sneak up on your opponent. You know what I'm saying? And try to catch them off guard more rather than a battle, a standoff. This is more for like you want to run up on someone when they're not looking and tap them on the shoulder over here. And then when they look this way, when they come back this way, 
you just, you feel me? And then hopefully when the air hits it and it stings and they notice it, they freak out from all the blood and get off the compound. That's what the razor is mostly meant for. But if you meant, if you're trying to like literally, you know, penalize your person, that opponent, that person, if they did something where you're trying to penalize them and you're really trying to, you know, teach them a lesson, yeah, cutting them on the face is going to leave them a scar. You know, that taught them a little lesson. But I done seen so many soft-ass people, pie-ass people, get hit with a razor blade and it didn't really change them. They'd go to another camp with a scar on their face or whatever and they were still low-key a snake or low-key still stealing Low-key still messing with boys or whatever it may be. You feel me? It doesn't teach them a lesson. But when someone runs up on someone with one of these and jumps on their opponent and goes to hmm, 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 you know, like you see in a damn a horror movie, man, it scares the shit out of them. And that's going to make them change their ways. That's going to make them carry themselves different. And if it don't, it's definitely going to make it to where they know and they think twice before they decide to get hit again with one of these, okay? Because a razor doesn't always do the job. Like I said, I've seen so many people flop with a razor, try to walk up on someone in the chow hall and try to rip their face open and the razor be dull. When the person they got it from told them it was a new razor. So you'll test it out. You know, when you first get it, you'll cut some paper. You may get an apple or orange, cut it. You know, try it on different things. Hit hit a book with it. Hit your pillow with it. Hit a mat with it. Even hit your own skin with it. Different things to test out to see if the razor is as sharp as people are saying it is. When at the end of the day, people are just trying to make money. So they'll sell you a dull razor. You feel me? Just to make the money. And then you'll go up and try to hit the person in the chow hall and rub it across their face and it don't even break skin or if it does it just leaves like a little tiny little line it don't even it's not really a slice it's literally just like a little burn and now you done played because that same person you think they're gonna go get a razor blade now no they're not they're gonna go get a knife they're gonna come after you now with a knife because you played and try to hit them with a razor blade so to me the differences between a razor blade and a knife is it's common sense you want to cook, you want to cut up pickles, you want to have fun and shave your own arms and legs or your mustache or whatever it may be, then yeah, a razor is what you would not in times out of 10 want to use. But when it comes time to battling and getting in that damn paint and really rocking out, you only want to use a razor blade if it's the only option you have. But me personally, if I had a razor blade, I would make a toilet paper knife. Toilet paper knife literally can puncture the skin and go through. Anything you swing hard enough with the pressure can break the skin and go in as and be used as a knife. You understand? Now think about it. People can fold a single piece of paper and hold it a certain way to make it hard and swing and put a hole in, in, in something with it. A piece of paper now, just a just a regular piece of paper that you write on. You feel me? Because it has to do with the force. When you are using a razor blade, you're swinging like you're, you're. It's like you're throwing a football or a baseball or something. You know what I'm saying? But when you are using a knife, a banger, it's a down force. So of course you're gonna do way more damage. And nine times out of ten, if someone pulls a razor blade out on you and you pull a banger out like this. Man, it's going to scare the shit out of them. And they're not going to want no smoke. They're going to see you up him when after he up that little razor blade. And you're going to be like, come here. Come on. Let me show you what. I'm. And next thing you know, they're going to they're gonna change their mind nine times out of ten. Unless they truly just living like that and they want to push your buttons and see if you're really going to use it. You see what I'm saying? Because just from the way it looks, you could tell what's going to do more damage. Literally. Look at that. You could tell. Right or wrong. And like I said, this is if you're just trying to sneak someone and get rid of them, get them off the compound. So you would literally like walk up to them and hit them when they least expect it. That's what people would use a razor blade for. But if you really want to ride that person, get on top of them and go to hitting them and hitting them and hitting them, what are you going to? No, you're not. 
That's what you would be doing with a razor blade. You want a banger, man. You see what I'm saying? So I just wanted to, you know, touch basis on that. The difference between a razor and a knife. Because like I said, a lot of people was like, why didn't you just tell them that the razor can cut them? That's pointless to do when you already have a razor. I wanted to even do that. That's a waste of time. You already had a razor blade. Yeah, but like I said, in that exact video, if you want to do more than slice someone, because slicing is not enough. It literally isn't. People will false claim a gang and get cut open. Go to another camp after being cut like that, right? Still claiming that, that gang. And you know what they'll do? They, they, they won't do it out in the, the open at first. They'll do it to people who are neutrons, people who are unaffiliated, to feel like there's someone to a, a, a section of nobodies. You get what I'm saying? Because here you got all these people who don't gangbang and they're trying to stay away from the gang members. So they're not going to go tell a gang member you're saying you're this or you're claiming that. They're not going to do that. You feel me? Because they don't want to be involved with the gangs. You understand? So when they get cut in the face, they'll low-key be repping that shit still on the low to people who are not affiliated. Now, when they get wet up and they get poked up, they ask me off the radar at their next camp. Unless they are a full, fully committed real gang member. You understand? But if they were false claiming and got wet up by their own kind. Or got wet up by someone because of they were false claiming. At one camp, when they land at their next institution. Nine times out of ten. If it was with a knife, a banger. It scared the shit out of them. They are going to curl and stay to theirself and find a different way to do their time now rather than running around like they are a part of a gang. And they learn their lesson. Because, believe it or not, a knife is life-threatening. You understand? A razor's not. They literally just glue you. They'll glue you shut. Straight up. Glue you or give you stitches. You feel me? But in prison, I've seen a lot of people get glued. You know, I've seen people all the way to where you see the side of their teeth, their, their jawline. That's how deep it is. Some people will tie two razors together so when they cut you, it gets an awesome cut. Real shit. And you, you'll see some ugly ass ones, ugly ass scars. You feel me? And that's basically what you're doing when you cut someone like that. You're leaving your mark. You're leaving a mark on them for life on their face. You feel me? So it depends on what it is you would want to do. But if you're literally trying to like defend yourself, if someone's coming up to you with a knife and you have a razor, or if they're coming up to you with a lock and just trying to beat the hell out of you with it, a razor is not going to do that much, bro. They're still going to be coming after you as you're swinging that, literally. But a knife, on the other hand, is going to make them back up. It's going to make them, once they feel that shit hit them once or twice, oh, them boys going to be hollering and they're going to back up. Because a knife is life-threatening, okay? Just like a poker. If y'all don't know what a poker is, a poker is like this. You see? That's a beautiful poker right there. And everyone knows how these are made. You get it out of the fence, you know. And, and But these right here are dangerous as hell also. You feel me? Because once this breaks the skin, once the tip goes in, due to the pressure... It's going to push it all the way to the handle. So that ha is how much is going to go in someone. You're going all through arteries, all that stuff. A poker is the most dangerous to me. You see what I'm saying? You have a poker in first place, then a knife, then a razor. Straight like that. And then a lock. That's how it would go. You feel me? That's the exact order that is most dangerous. I know you have woos which is just a machete, it's like a long knife, which those two, those do damage, but at the same time, those slice, those will, those will put a chunk in someone when you're swinging it, you feel me? But a poker or a knife, think about it, they do severe damage, and that's the differences. That's why if you can make a toilet paper knife, which isn't a real deal metal knife, it's made out of toilet paper and glue, you feel me? But when that glue is hard enough and you have that many layers, as hard as that shit gets, you could do the job with that. Literally. And then you add more glue on the outside and around it so that way when it gets blood on it or it gets wet or anything, it doesn't 
it doesn't start getting soft because the toilet paper got wet. Like, them things do do the job. You feel me? Now, me personally, I only made one in prison before just to learn how to make it. You get what I'm saying? I've always had knives. I had real deal knives, machetes, and bangers. Real deal. So I didn't need a toilet paper knife. But it is something to know if you are a nobody and you don't have access to nothing. If the whole compound turns on you and no one wants to do business with you, your own gang left you out there in that water, you feel me, against the rivalries or, or people are out there to get you and you can't trust nobody. All you have to do is, like I said, find Razor, which you can find it because it's everywhere, whether it's from another inmate or off the fences, you know, and get some glue, which is easy to come across inside of the school buildings, and toilet paper. Do your little chemistry, put that shit together, do it the right way, and you're good. Straight up. It's easy as one, two, three. And now... You have a low-key knife that no one knows about that doesn't go off on the metal detectors that you can bring to the rec yard, you know, that you can bring with you anywhere. It's made out of toilet paper, for God's sake. You feel me? But I just wanted to do this little quick video on this because, like I said, a lot of people in my comment section, they were like, oh, you should have just used a razor blade. What a waste of time. And I'm telling you now, nine times out of ten, if not ten out of ten, People who say that in them comments, never been in that situation, never would probably even stand up for their self. They probably wouldn't even make the knife. They would probably just break it off and bow down and turn their head to the situation. I'm being real with you. They, they probably would have been got got because it's common sense. Anyone knows a knife is better than a razor blade. That's simple. But a razor blade is easier to hide. You get what I'm saying? It's easier to, you know, catch someone off guard with. But if you're going to war and there's four or five people that are sticking together against just you, they're not going to be scared of that razor blade. They're going to run up on you and beat your ass, take that razor blade from you and probably carve your face with your own razor. I'm just being real. A toilet paper knife to me is better than a razor blade. And that's the differences between razors and knives. Straight up. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. As y'all seen, I changed my little camera angle real quick. I'm just trying trying new things. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with trying new things. You feel me? But anyways, I appreciate y'all rocking with me. Y'all can also catch me on K Frog Gaming. Y'all be prepared. Boy, I'm about to give away two PlayStation 5s. I already gave away an Xbox X series. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm about to give away two PS5s when I hit 8K. Y'all come over there, hang out, play with me. You know what I'm saying? I'll be vibing with my subscribers. I'll be on there every single day, if not once, twice a day. People ask, damn, Frog, what you be doing with your, your free time, man, when you ain't on K-Frog TV? You know what I'm saying? My free time is on K-Frog Gaming, man. I'm building a platform over there. We're a little bit past 5K subscribers. And once I hit 8K, I'm giving away two PlayStation 5s. I appreciate y'all watching this video. Y'all already know, man. Till next time, this is Frog.